On today's Revisto training session, we're going to be covering how to create issues. As you can see, I've got my Revisto model opened up over here. Um, you're going to see this Create Issue button on any of your toolbars in Revisto. Um, and it looks like this right here. Um, whether you're in the ruler, it's going to pop up. It's going to be in a little different spot maybe each time, but you're going to see that with just about every tool you use. If I create a section here, right here is my Create Issue button. So what happens when we click Create Issue? That's going to give me a pin that is now movable. So if I want to call out an exact problem, let's say this microwave over here needs swapped out. I can drop that pin directly on that. And note that when you drop a pin on that, that is actually storing that object's geometry. So we'll be able to see this in 2D or 3D using that. But over on the left are all of my markup tools. As you can see, I grab the, the pencil to circle that and say, swap out. Um, you could change on the right side, you can change all of your text color sizes, stuff like that. So as you can see, I've got this marked up the way I want. Um, you're going to want to make sure to put a title in this. So I'm going to say change microwave. Um, you're also able, if you're on the iPad or if you're on a PC and want to snap a picture of yourself, you're able to click this little button and that's going to bring up your camera. You're also able to hit this to attach images. Or if you um, decide you want to make it a stamp, which we'll cover in a later tutorial, you can also make it a stamp. So I'm going to hit done. And now this issue lives in my issue tracker bucket. Um, it's really important to note each of these issues you make have customizable parameters on the right side here. So I'm able to come in here and if this is critical to my project, I'm able to add the priority. I'm able to add a deadline. And if it's set to today or any previous days, it's going to show up red in your issue tracker. And also the deadline shows up red here. Um, I can change my assignee. Now this is a really important one to note. This is something that you'll be passing around. Um, because it's an action item now. So now you want that in that person's hand. So I want Brett to swap this microwave out. So I'm assigning it to him. And I want also Dan and David to make sure that that issue gets completed. So now they are watching this issue. Um, if I just want it to be between us set as watchers and the assignee, I can toggle this to private. Note that as I'm doing all of this, it tracks every action I have taken the whole way. So you can't undo. So if something comes up and say you need to explain why you said that, you can say um, press wrong button or something, but you can't delete that out. So that's an important thing. This is a log um, and that creates transparency and also accountability with the whole team. Um, you can also add tags here. So if there's a specific change order associated with it, you can add a tag and that'll also be covered in another tutorial. And going back to why it's important to make sure that this pin is placed in the right place. So let's say I want to change this valve right here. So I'm going to drop that pin as close to that valve as I can. Say fix valve. Maybe I want to give this a little markup so they know, hey, it's that one. So I created the issue. As you can see, it's over in my issue tracker. Now if we go over to the left side, I can click and go back into 3D mode to where I can move around and I can see exactly where that pin is. I can click the markups and see exactly what they marked up. And I can also click on 2D. Now um, I'm going to filter this down so that we we see a little less 
craziness with all of the issues. I'm turning my cluster radius up so I can actually filter down to just that issue. Now I'm going to turn this down and there we are and I can see exactly where that is on the sheet. And I can also click these little three dots next to 2D and go to any sheet that I want and see where that lives. And what's really cool about this from a mechanical perspective is that you're actually going to be able to see where that is um, in relation to your spools. So you can see there it is, it's that drop on the, on the header. That concludes our tutorial on creating issues. Good luck learning and have lots of fun.